As we mentioned in our last video, our next destination was Prometheus Cave, located about a 30 minutes drive from Marthvili Canyon. Upon arrival, we purchased tickets for the next available guided tour. Now, come along with us as we explore the fascinating underground world of Prometheus Cave together. Prometheus Cave is located in the Emirati region of Georgia, near the town of Tskaltubo, approximately 20 kilometers west of Kutesi. It is easily accessible by a short drive from the city and is one of Georgia's most popular natural attractions. The cave is nestled in the picturesque surroundings of the Kumistavi village, and the entire area is known for its rich geological formations. Discovered in 1984, Prometheus Cave has been a source of fascination due to its incredible underground beauty and geological significance. While the cave is relatively new to tourists, the formations within are millions of years old. For centuries, the cave remained hidden, with only local legends speaking of its existence. It was named after the mythical Greek titan Prometheus, who, according to legend, was chained to the mountains nearby as punishment for giving fire to humanity. In 1985, the conversion of the cave into a sightseeing tourist destination began. By 1989, a pedestrian route was laid in the cave for about one kilometer, stairs and paths were built, and a 150-meter tunnel was punched out at the exit and the construction of ground floor buildings began. The cave was equipped with temporary lighting, and small groups of tourists started to visit. In 1990, due to the collapse of the Soviet Union and a lack of funds, the project was closed. For several years, a local citizen protected the cave from vandals, as memorialized by a statue of him and his dog at the cave's entrance. In 2007, 17 years after the closure of the project, the Georgian authorities returned to the idea of the conversion of the cave into a tourist destination once again. Cave was refurnished and reopened to visitors on 26 May 2011. Exploring Prometheus Cave is like stepping into a mesmerizing underground wonderland. The cave is vast, with well-lit pathways that lead you through a series of chambers filled with stunning natural formations. Stalactites and stalagmites, formed over millions of years, hang from the ceilings and rise from the ground in intricate and otherworldly shapes. The guided tour highlights various sections of the cave, each more impressive than the last. Some chambers are illuminated with soft, colored lighting, enhancing the beauty of the rock formations and giving the space a mystical atmosphere. As you walk deeper into the cave, you hear the sound of dripping water, reminding you of the slow, continuous process that has shaped this underground landscape. The temperature inside Prometheus Cave remains fairly constant throughout the year, averaging around 14 degrees Celsius to 16 degrees Celsius, 57 degrees Fahrenheit to 61 degrees Fahrenheit. This cool and humid environment is typical of caves, so it's advisable to wear something warm, especially if you are visiting during the summer when the outside temperature is significantly higher. The steps inside Prometheus Cave were quite slippery due to water dripping through the cave's roof. While there are railings along many parts of the path, some sections lack them, so it's important to watch your footing as you walk. The interior of the cave is dark, with only dim lighting to illuminate the steps, adding to the atmosphere but making it challenging to capture the beauty on camera. The true magic of the cave can only be fully appreciated with the naked eye, as video footage, especially without flash, doesn't do justice to the stunning formations and textures we experienced. The walking tour inside Prometheus Cave lasts about one hour and covers a distance of around 1.4 kilometers. This journey takes you through various chambers, each more impressive than the last, but requires caution due to the wet and uneven surfaces. During our summer visit to Prometheus Cave, the river flowing through the cave had significantly less water, which meant that the usual boat ride inside the cave was unavailable. But the walking tour through the cave still offered a mesmerizing glimpse of the underground world. After the cave tour, a mini bus arrived to pick us up and drop us off at the parking area of Prometheus Cave. 
This convenient service saved us from walking back up the path, making the end of the visit much more comfortable and allowing us to relax after the fascinating underground exploration. From Prometheus Cave, we drove back to Colchis Fountain in a hired taxi. We arrived at Colchis Fountain around 3.30 p.m. and decided to walk to a nearby Indian restaurant for lunch. Conveniently located close to our apartment, we returned afterward to rest for a while. By 5 p.m., we hired a cab to visit Bhagrati Cathedral, and despite the late afternoon hour, the sun was still quite strong when we arrived. The time to reach Bhagrati Cathedral from central Kutesi typically takes about 10 to 15 minutes by car, depending on traffic. The exterior of the cathedral is an impressive example of early medieval Georgian architecture, with grand stone walls, arched windows, and a beautifully restored green dome that stands out against the sky. The cathedral features a vast, open nave with high ceilings, creating a grand sense of space and light. The stone walls and arches are plain, emphasizing the structure's ancient origins. Upon entering, the cathedral's interior is equally captivating. The spacious nave is bathed in natural light filtering through tall windows, creating a peaceful and spiritual ambience. The vaulted ceilings, intricately carved stone details, and restored frescoes give visitors a glimpse into its centuries-old history. While much of the original frescoes and decorations were lost over time, you may still find remnants of medieval stone carvings and fragments of ancient frescoes on the walls, which provide a glimpse into the cathedral's former grandeur. Though largely restored, the interior still holds an air of ancient reverence, with traces of its original craftsmanship visible in certain areas. The altar, located at the eastern end of the cathedral, is modest but spiritual, reflecting the simplicity of Georgian Orthodox religious traditions. The layout of the altar aligns with typical Georgian church designs of the time. As part of the restoration efforts, parts of the cathedral were rebuilt with modern materials, such as glass and steel. These modern interventions, especially noticeable in the upper levels and balconies, offer a contrast to the original stonework and are a point of interest for those studying the blending of ancient and contemporary architecture. Like most Georgian Orthodox churches, Bhagrati Cathedral houses religious icons, where visitors and worshippers alike can light candles and offer prayers. These icons reflect the spiritual life of the cathedral, and you'll often see them adorned with flowers or offerings. Inside Bhagrati Cathedral, you can still see parts of the original architecture that have survived the centuries. One striking feature is the presence of old stone pillars and fragments from the original construction. These ancient stones, with their weathered surfaces, are a visible reminder of the cathedral's medieval origins, offering a direct connection to its history. Some of the original stone carvings and sections of old walls are left exposed, blending with the modern restoration work, allowing visitors to appreciate the craftsmanship of the past. The contrast between the aged, uneven stones and the more recent materials highlights the centuries of restoration and repair the cathedral has undergone. These remnants of the old structure add a sense of authenticity and continuity, preserving the spirit of the cathedral's original builders while standing amidst the modern touches that have kept Bhagrati Cathedral standing through the ages. Bhagrati Cathedral, perched on Ukimeriyoni Hill, offers breathtaking views of the surrounding landscape, including the city of Kutesi and the Rioni River. The exterior of the cathedral is an impressive example of early medieval Georgian architecture, with grand stone walls, arched windows, and a beautifully restored green dome that stands out against the sky. The setting sun casts a golden hue on the stone, enhancing its historic charm. Built in the early 11th century, during the reign of King Bhagrat III, from whom it takes its name, it was completed around 1003 AD. The cathedral was constructed to symbolize the unity and strength of the Georgian kingdom under Bhagrat III, the first king to unify various Georgian territories into one state. Bhagrati Cathedral played a crucial religious and political role in medieval Georgia and served as a royal cathedral. 
Unfortunately, it suffered significant damage in 1692 when it was partially destroyed by Ottoman forces. The collapse of its dome left it in ruins for centuries. In the 20th and early 21st centuries, the cathedral underwent a series of restorations with efforts to preserve its historical significance. These restoration works were controversial as they involved modern interventions, including the reconstruction of parts of the cathedral. Despite the restoration debates, Bhagrati Cathedral was inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994, along with the nearby Gelti Monastery, due to its cultural and historical importance. However, in 2017, it was removed from the list due to concerns over the extent of modern reconstruction, which was seen as compromising its authenticity. After visiting Bhagrati Cathedral, we took a bolt cap to Kutesi's White Bridge, arriving around 7 p.m. White Bridge in Kutesi is a charming pedestrian bridge that spans the Rioni River, offering picturesque views of the surrounding landscape. Built in the mid-19th century and later renovated, the bridge is named after its bright white railings, which stand out against the natural scenery. The flooring of the bridge has sections made of glass, allowing you to look down at the rushing water below, a feature that adds a bit of thrill to the experience. The bridge connects the two sides of the city, making it a popular spot for locals and tourists alike to stroll, relax, and enjoy the views of the river and Kutesi surroundings. On a clear day, the sight of the green riverbanks and the historic buildings nearby enhances the serene atmosphere. Street vendors often set up along the bridge, adding to the lively and welcoming ambience. On White Bridge in Kutesi, there is a notable statue of a young boy holding a hat in one hand and waving with the other, symbolizing a welcoming gesture. The statue is placed near the glass section of the bridge and has become a popular spot for visitors to take photos. The figure, with its simple yet joyful stance, enhances the charm and character of the White Bridge experience. The White Bridge in Kutesi, like many romantic bridges around the world, has become a spot where couples attach locks to the railings as a symbol of their love. These locks, often engraved with initials or special messages, are fastened to the railings before the keys are thrown into the river below, signifying an unbreakable bond. From the White Bridge, we strolled through the charming streets of Kutesi, enjoying the beautiful sunset as we made our way towards Kolchi's fountain. Since there was still time before dinner, we decided to explore the nearby Kutesi synagogue. Unfortunately, it was closed, but we managed to capture the picture of its exterior. Afterwards, we walked back to our apartment, making a quick stop at the supermarket to pick up some food parcels for dinner. With plans to travel to Batumi by road the next day, we decided to turn in early so we could check out by 8.30 am. Stay tuned for our next video, where we explore the vibrant city of Batumi. Until then, goodbye and take care.